When I bought my first house, I was able to negotiate a pretty low interest rate. It was an interest rate of about 4.5%. I was very surprised how low it was. Now, that interest rate is a nominal interest rate, meaning it's the price that's charged. It's the rate that people talk about and that, and that markets help set. One of the reasons I got such a good rate was because the bankers did not think there would be much inflation in the future. And so expectations have a big influence on nominal interest rates in this video. The purpose of it is to understand the impact of expected inflation on nominal interest rates. But before, let's just make sure we understand that when people borrow and repay money and when people lend money, they don't care so much about the dollar bills, but instead what those dollar bills buy. And when we think about how much a dollar bill can buy, we often use the metaphor of a basket. A basket is just a collection of goods and services that people tend to buy. The government comes up with its own basket, and in this basket, about 40% of it is housing, which means for every $1 or $100 or $100,000, 40% of that money goes to housing. So for any metaphorical basket of goods, about 40% of it is comprised of houses. And it doesn't have to be a whole house, it can be part of a house. Here are two of these metaphorical baskets. And let's just suppose that each basket costs $50 at the current time. Which means that if you have a $100 bill, that $100 bill has a purchasing power of two baskets. And let's suppose you lend that $100 to somebody and say, okay, just, just pay me back in a month. And that person comes and brings the $100 back to you. But then suppose that during that month, the inflation rate was 100%, meaning prices doubled. Now, a basket doesn't cost 50 it costs $100. And that $100 you are paid can only buy one basket. Well, this isn't very good for you, is it? You went from having two baskets to having one basket. And so if you're going to lend or borrow money, it's very important to understand the role of expected inflation and regular inflation on interest rates. When markets set interest rates, nominal interest rates, they're doing two things. One, it's trying to achieve some kind of targeted real rate. And that real rate denotes the number of baskets that's being lent and borrowed. Like if I'm lending you money that can buy one basket, suppose I want to be repaid enough dollars that I can now buy two baskets. That's an increase in my wealth and that's why I lent money in the first place. But after a market determines what a real rate should be, it then has to adjust that real rate based on inflation. Suppose that you borrow $100 and at the time one basket is $10. So when you take the loan you can of $100, you can buy 10 baskets from a lender for one year. And y'all are both trying to set a real interest rate that would be about 50%. So what you're trying to do is when you borrow $100, it's like you're borrowing 10 baskets. And y'all are trying to make it such that however much money you give back to the lender, they can buy 15 baskets with it. So the number of their baskets go up by five baskets, which in percentage terms is 50%. And so what you basically did, you borrowed 10, you're going to pay back that 10, plus you're going to pay back 50% more, giving them 15 total baskets. But in reality, we borrow and lend money. <clears throat> and suppose there's no inflation during the period the money is borrowed and lent. Then you borrowed $100. You know if the price of baskets remain $10, you can simply pay back the lender $150. The lender can then take that $150 and buy 15 baskets with it. Such that here, the nominal interest rate 
in terms of the money you borrow on land is going to equal the real interest rate, the number of baskets you borrow on land. <clears throat> and when there's no inflation, it turns out that that nominal rate equals the real rate. But of course, when we think there may be inflation or deflation, that we may have to adjust this nominal rate to achieve that 50% real rate that we were wanting. Let's stick with this example and say, what if, instead of expecting no inflation, we did expect some inflation? And remember, our target is such that the, however much money we repay divided by the price of a basket, we want that to equal 15 because we're we borrowed 10 baskets we want to repay 15 baskets well, what if expected inflation was 50 percent such that we expected the price of baskets to go up by 50 percent well that means the price of baskets increased let's put 50 there not five this meant the price of baskets goes up from 10 to 15. And we want to know how much we're going to repay. And we want whatever this is to equal 15 baskets. Well, then we know that we must repay $225. Because 225 divided by 15 is 15 baskets. Well, what this implies is that we borrowed $100 we repaid 225 and so what was the nominal interest rate that achieved this the answer is 1.25 or 125% well now let's ask what if inspected inflation was not 50% but negative 50% we call that deflation again we know that the price of baskets was $10. If it decreases 50%, price of a basket is now $5. We want to know how much we must repay such that in the end, the lender gets back 15 baskets. And the answer is 75 because 75 divided by 5 equals 15. Well, what kind of interest rate is this? We borrowed $100. We're paying back some nominal interest rate. In the end, we want to give them less dollars than we received because prices are lower now. Well, the only nominal interest rate that makes this work is negative 25%. So what does all this tell us? Remember, what we want to know is the relationship between a nominal rate, interest rate, and a real interest rate. In our example, we wanted a real interest rate of 50%. Well, when we had expected inflation that was greater than zero, then our nominal rate, should have been greater than the real interest rate. And specifically, the nominal interest rate was 125% compared to the real interest rate of 50%. Well, everything changes when you don't have inflation and when you have deflation instead. And so now let's look, what if expected inflation is now less than zero? You expect prices to fall over the time the money is lent. Well, in that case, the nominal interest rate should be less than the real interest rate. And in our example, that nominal rate was negative 25% compared to the real interest rate of 50%. And this last one may seem weird, but, but just remember, I'm lending you a hundred dollars I'm saying when you come back you only need to bring me seventy five dollars back because even though I'm getting less dollar bills each dollar bill can buy a lot more stuff and in the end I'll still be able to buy five more baskets 
than the money I lent you could.